Well, my little savage is back, and she's decided to write a cookbook. Only she doesn't know how to cook. In this new book, the savage and I speak mostly with one voice with occasional creative differences. But right now, I'm going to switch to my savage point of view. This is not a cookbook. I am the little savage. By definition, I am not domestic. I got my name when a drummer in my band said, you're a little savage. This is an early cartoon version of me, which came into being when I decided to draw my life in pictures instead of words. I'm sure I'm going to say a few things that I might regret or I might offend. So I'm putting this disclaimer in at the very beginning. I'll refer to this often in the book, especially in the chapter on forks and forking. <laughs> I must be possessed. Why would I want to write a cookbook? I hate to cook. I hate all that shopping. I hate all that chopping. So as part of my R&D, I went to my Uncle Mort. Unfortunately, he's dead. And his advice was, go virtual, my dear. Well, he looks pretty virtual. Well, maybe the world needs a new diet book. Want to lose weight? Follow my plan and you'll be paper thin. Wait a second, I'm a cartoon. I don't eat. I'm not real. Why would you believe me? But if you really want to look great, learn Photoshop. At, le <laughs> At least that's a skill you can add to your resume when my diet plan fails. Top of my list is coffee and my illusions. Me and my coffee, we're happy together. It warms me up. It makes my brain work. It's the best way to start the day. Still dreaming that the world is functioning properly. I believe in moderation. I've been told there are 12-step problems and pro <laughs> sorry, 12-step programs in some cities to help with their chocolate intake, their coffee intake. Not me. I'll moderate on my own. Thank you very much. One cup an hour. That seems reasonable, don't you think? Did I mention the numerous health benefits of coffee? It cures PMS, depression, hangovers, caffeine, headaches, sleep. Colors seem brighter, conversations more animated. It's a health food. It's not a drug. It's good for you until it's not. Well, chocolate, black gold, Texas tea, it seems everything good has its dark side. Now I find out that my favorite foods are creating slaves in Africa. Is nothing sacred? How will I get my theobromine? I'd better count my pennies and eat organic fair trade unless I want tortured slave children on my plate. Butter, it's good for you. Ask the French. They know butter, like eggs, has been much maligned. It's got vitamin A, D, E, K, manganese, chromium, zinc, copper. Butter has more selenium per gram than wheat germ or herring. So you can just get rid of that guilt right now. I'm in the process of becoming a more domesticated savage. I discovered the dark side of cooking. It's called cleaning. I looked up synonyms, synonyms for housework, came up with domestic arts. I am now the domestic artiste. I'm trying to find the love. In my quest for domestic bliss, I invented goddesses and kitchen fairies. Kitchen fairies do the dishes and sweep the floor in the middle of the night while you sleep in your dreams and you wake up to a brand new day and everything is shiny and new. Anyone want to ply? Come on, takers, takers. Cooking requires utensils. So I investigated the history of their use, forks in particular, and their relationship to civilization. In the beginning, there was a lot of begetting and begatting and forking going on. And by the Dark Ages, dogmas were in charge. Savages were barbecued at the stake. And forks were considered implements of the devil, sort of like HMOs. Even though the early savages were carnivores, I have stopped eating other cartoons. I don't eat Easter bunnies. I don't eat anything with a face, feet, fur, or fins. My life has been full of recipes for disaster. I have stewed in my juices about nearly everything, the world, my work, the dating pool. I used to stew about it all. Things were really heating up in the comic kitchen. And then I had a simple revelation. 
I vent approximately every 28 days. It's like the seasons. It's part of the natural cycle, like Hawaiian volcanoes. They don't explode, they vent. Good to watch for those little earthquakes that precede those little ventings. Good to find your safety zone along the way. No book on food would be complete without a chapter on the holidays. Peace, love, death, joy to the world, mazel tov. But we really know it's about food. I couldn't decide on the peace card or the not so nice card, the holiday action card, so I put both of them up there. Why is it December holidays also bring the sound of mucus? You're supposed to moan or laugh. <laughs> Where do these buckets of mucus come from? How does my body produce all this? This stuff is amazing. If only it could be used for something. I could always do a book about eating on a budget. Really? Did you know that grass is healthier for you than most of the food you buy in the regular supermarket? It's better for you than cow burgers. What the cows munch on is much more nutritious than the cow and its excretions. I won't mention cow pus. Okay. So far, there are 20 slides and no recipes. I have an idea. I'll have a recipe contest. You can send me your recipes. No face, no feet, no fur, no fins. Recipes to me at littlesavage.com. If you win, I'll send you a copy of my ebook. I'm serious, folks. I want your recipes. <laughs> Come cook. <laughs>